My name is Elon Schulman, and I'm in love. I'm in love with my country, especially the area I call home, the Golan Heights. I grew up on a kibbutz called Merom Golan, located just three miles from the ceasefire line with Syria. The farming land of the kibbutz runs along this border. I guess you could say I'm an Israeli cowboy. Uh, I herded our cows and worked in our fields, helping to harvest apples, cherries, and kiwis. I learned bits of pieces of Arabic from the Syrian farmers in the Arab El Fadel tribe who would work in their fields right next to mine. When the time came for me to join the army, I joined the paratroopers, Khativat Atzanchanim. And I served for seven years. I got barely injured when I was shot in both of my legs. Uh, I was in a wheelchair for two years, so I couldn't do anything physical, definitely not uh, riding on a horse and doing things as most of my guys on the kibbutz were doing. So I focused on my studies, uh, the history of Israel and the Middle East. I thought I knew everything about the Middle East, and the more I learned and studied, the more I realized I had no clue. Today I volunteer as part of an intelligence unit in the IDF. I lecture for Haifa University and I brief delegations of visitors and students about what's going on just a few steps away from my home. To better understand the threats facing us here in the north, we need to travel from my kibbutz just two minutes east to the ceasefire line with Syria. For more than seven years, the Syrian civil war has been taking place right here along this border. Most of this land was controlled by different rebel groups. Just for example, you saw the Hayat al-Sham, or you can just call it Al-Qaeda, over here in Kunetra district, and Khaled ibn al-Walid army over there in Dar'a district. But in July of last year, that all changed. The Syrian regime completely recaptured the land along the border with Israel. So today we see Syrian soldiers on the other side. But are they just Syrian? Since 2012, Iran sent the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, to establish their presence in the region. They recruited 90,000 Syrian soldiers to join them. They trained Shiite militias, such as the Fatamayun from Afghanistan, who speak Pashto, and the Zainabun from Pakistan, who speak Urdu. Iraqis militias, such as the Isayib Ahl al-Haq, Liwa Zul al-Fakir, Liwa Fadl al-Abbas, Liwa Imam al-Hussein, al nujaybe and more, who speak other dialects in Arabic, and then Iranians who speak Persian. And Hezbollah is here too. So what are all these people doing here? Sure, they're helping Assad, but they're also attacking Israel. In the last year, Iran launched an attack drone from Syria across the Golan and fired 32 rockets at Israel. None of the rockets landed in Israel. Just a few. Just a few months ago, as Israel is skied down on the slopes of Mount Hermon, Iran launched a missile. Thankfully, the Iron Dome shot it down. The battle in Syria continues as Iran tries to replicate in Syria what it has achieved with Hezbollah in Lebanon. And what is happening in Lebanon? Let's take a look. It's also relatively short distance from my house, about 20, 25 minutes in the car. In Lebanon, there are 50,000 Hezbollah soldiers and reservists. And they are well-trained, well-armed, and well-paid by Iran. Hezbollah tactics have evolved. It used to be that they would provoke Israel with rockets, and when Israel would retaliate, they would retreat into their towns and villages. They would use the civilians as human shield and say, look, the IDF is destroying Lebanon. Today, it's a different story. 
Hezbollah has elite battalions training for breaching the border with Israel, friends with Israel. They have 150,000 rockets, some of which can hit Israeli towns, cities, and strategic sites anywhere in Israel. I remember as a kid on the kibbutz when we would have to go to the bomb shelter, I felt as if it was a game. I would run around and play in the shelter so naive without the burden of understanding the threat above us. Now on that same kibbutz, when I heard to get my daughters and my wife to bring them into the shelter, my heart pounds in my chest, and I just pray that our daughters also are naive enough not to be afraid. But this is the harsh truth, I must tell you. In a future war, more than 1,500 missiles could be fired at Israel every single day. These are rockets provided directly by Iran. And it isn't just the threat from the sky that we have to focus on. There is a threat from beneath the ground as well. Tunnels. We know through Israel intelligence that Hezbollah was planning on using at least six tunnels to infiltrate Israel, to take over towns and villages, to block highways and prevent Israeli armies from bringing reinforcements. These are the strategic tactics of an army growing in sophistication and confidence. If Iran is successful in Syria, the next war in the north won't simply be Israel versus Hezbollah. It will be a two-front battle with Hezbollah and Iranian-backed forces in Syria. So how are all these weapons? How are all these Shia militias getting to Syria and to Lebanon? For the answer, we must go look more broadly at the map. You see now a stretch of land that is shared control, extending all the way from Iran to Lebanon. This is a direct path that Iran is trying to create to connect Tehran to Beirut. It has been a dream of Iran for many years. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah has called this the road of liberation because the road bring the land bridge leads directly to Israel. It is the path that provides the weapons, the money, the manpower for Hezbollah to attack Israel. It is the land bridge that allows Iran to transfer large quantities of missiles and advanced weapons to Israel's borders. So what can be done to stop this? That's where the United States comes in. Let me explain. All of this cost Iran money, quite a lot of money. It takes money to get the supplies to build the roads and the tunnels and the missiles. And it cost a lot of money to found the IRGC, Hezbollah, and the shared militias. In fact, the CIA estimates that Iran spent many billions a year on exporting the revolution. And most of it spent in this region. Thanks to U.S. international sanctions, Iran has fewer resources to fund its war on Israel. But it's also cost Israel a lot of money to defend its borders and its people. With the help of a joint U.S.-Israeli Missiles Defense Corporation, we can intercept missiles like the one fired near Mount Hermon. And thanks to joint U.S.-Israeli Tunnels Detection Program, we have been successful in locating the underground pathways that Iran-backed soldiers continue to plan and dig and travel. Because of United States support, Israel have the F-35s and munition to challenge Iran presence in Syria. But here, But here, what you need to know, we cannot intercept every rocket. Terrorists will likely try to dig more tunnels. And without increased economic pressure, 
Iran will continue its march right up to my front door. Without you, without the United States, there is no safety against Iran moving across the Israeli border to the Golan, to my home, to the place I love. Thank you.